Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9GP, and here we go with Out of the Park Baseball 21, finally released yesterday. I picked up the beta a few days ago, have played around with it a little bit, but uh, haven't gotten a, a legitimate playthrough started, but probably going to do that in a few days and uh, start uploading those videos, but I thought I would do this year what I did last year. There were some big updates to the 3D uh, game engine going into last season's version, version 20. This year they've added a few things to do with camera views and you're able to follow the ball now in terms of action and it's kind of like a, gives you kind of like a a broadcast TV type presentation but there were a couple things that I found about it that were kind of fun um, that I wanted to showcase and I uh, really unexpected on my end. I didn't, I didn't know that I would um, get much enjoyment out of it but I'll show you what I'm talking about in, in the game but um, what I've done is I've just tried a Phillies test season here. Um, Phillies, of course, my favorite team. And we're at opening day, so we're going to just jump into a game against Miami on the road <clears throat> and see how we how we do. Um, this continue button, I'm still getting used to that as well. Uh, this is a new game flow button that they've uh, incorporated. It's like uh, you can configure it to take care of several different different tasks whenever you click it so that it's so that you're not having to go manually, I guess, you know, do do this task and then jump ahead and then do this task and jump ahead. Uh, you you might uh, be able to configure that to your liking. You know, there are certain things in there. Like, for me, I like to play um, in a commission. Well, not necessarily commissioner mode, but I really like to take control of everything when it comes to the team. So for me, I'm probably just going to set it to the default where it notifies me or, or take care, takes care of everything when you click that button. But um, that's something I'll probably play around with and discuss a little bit more when we, when we get into the playthrough video. But this is uh, similar to last year. You you got your lineups and matchup screen first. But I wanted to look at um, some of the viewing option things settings here. I haven't really changed too much of it. I'm going to leave it as it is. But this modern 3D view, you're going to want that to be, I think, to take advantage of some of the, the new gameplay features that have been added or the uh, viewing angle features that have been added. Um, ball size, small, you can change that. I'll probably leave that the same. 3D animation speed, I'm going to leave it normal. And delay between plays, it uh, looks like that's one second. If I'm reading that right, I'm going to leave that at normal. Uh, but... When we get into the game, I'm going to go in over some of these camera options. There are so many ways you can change these to to view the game. It's really cool. Um, but we'll we'll look at that when we get started. Just looking at the lineup, I'm probably going to leave it to default. We got Aaron Nola, opening day starter. Didi Gregorius now on the Phillies. Uh, that's going to be interesting to see how well he does this year. Jay Bruce on the Phillies uh, again. So that's going to be cool. See, see if he can uh, have a full season with him, hit a, I don't know, 30, 40 home runs. That might be cool to see. Uh, they're going with Roman Quinn in center. Uh, we're kind of lacking there. I think they played Kingery a lot last year in center. No, maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. Let me see. Yeah, he, he's got some center field uh, abilities. I'm not too happy with this Roman Quinn. If, if this were you know, going to be my playthrough. I might change that up a little bit, uh, but we'll go ahead and see what it's going to look like. So let's go ahead and get into the game. I've noticed the ambient sounds are a little bit different this year. They don't seem to be as uh, overwhelming sometimes, you know, until you get to like late in the game or you get a rally going or something. But this is your standard default view. This is what we had in last year's version. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start it off just to see how the uh, camera angles and how the flow works in terms of following the ball. It, it should be set to kind of follow the ball right now. So you're seeing the, the camera panning. Uh, that was just a fly out to center. And then Reese Hoskins, see what he does. Another fly out to center, so straight away. So, the, you know, you got some panning action there going with the camera. Bryce Harper up. First pitch, he's swinging. 
and a dribbler there to the pitcher. He's slow to get to it, but throws him out. So you can kind of see that you know the transitions there, the the close-ups, the you know the pans, those kind of things. But there's three camera settings you can use here. Um, let me go to the. It's under the view settings at the top. So you've got the initial camera view, which is this, this view we're looking at right now. You've got the pitch camera view, which that's the camera angle when the pitch is thrown. And then you've got the action camera view, which is where the pitch is going to go or where the ball is going to go after the batter hits it or that whatever the play is. So let's say I wanted to go initial camera from behind the batter. And then I want to go uh, pitch camera view, let's say, let's say the same. So that should keep this, when the pitch is thrown, it should keep this uh, angle. And I'm just going to, you know, just choose the pitch. So you can see then it moves out to the action, you know, to the, to the uh, action camera where it's going to show the whole field. So take a look at that one, one more time. There's a liner up the middle for a hit. Now, what if I wanted to do, let's say, initial camera, center field, uh, and let's say pitch camera, center field close, right? Which is a pretty good, pretty good angle there. It lets you look at maybe uh, see how the movement is on pitches and things. And action camera, let's just go. Uh, center field on that one. Let's see how that works. So runner on, there's the pitch, and double play. So nothing doing for them after a hit. So one of the things that I found that I, I just didn't realize when I was thinking about these different angles, I, I think I thought maybe there would be a two or three different angles you could look at and that would be it. I didn't realize they, they broke it down to that level with initial pitch and action. So let's, this is, uh, my wife and I go to a lot of baseball games and we always like sitting on the first base side. So I thought it was really cool. This just, I don't know why, but I, I love this uh, feature of these new camera angles. So. We can have the initial camera from the first base side. We can have the pitch camera from the uh, first base stands, and we can have the action camera from the first base stands. And I'm, la I'm I'm smiling to myself as I'm doing this, but it's like you're watching the game from your favorite seat. So choose to swing away. Oh, there's a liner down into right. Looks like it's deep in the corners. He gets it in. I just think that's so cool. Um, you could probably change the action camera so that you're getting a wide, a wide camera. I wonder how that would change it. Let me let me see what that does. I think I changed the wrong camera there. So the action I, I want meant to change the action camera, right? Did I do that wrong? Okay, the pitch camera I want on the first base stands, but let's see what the action camera looks like if I do a wide. Oh yeah, it bounces back and forth. Pretty good quick transition there too, but I, I just feel like, um, I just thought that that was so cool that you could do that. Like if, if you wanted to just view the whole game from down the third base line, third base stands, um, here we go. Set them all to third base, so you can watch the game from your, you know, if your favorite seats are down there along the third base line. Camera panning is fairly smooth. You know, uh, when you, when you when you get used to it, you, your eyes adjust and you you follow it pretty quickly. Uh, so who we got up? Kingery, <clears throat> full count. Oh, that's a weak grounder to short. They are going to turn to double play. So, not much going for the Phillies here so far. Now we got Kingery up. Oh no, we got uh, their back end to the game. Oh, big hit there. That's going to find the gap. 
I mean, I just, I'm really uh, enjoying this, I gotta say. The new angles, I just, uh, I can't believe how much they're adding to the end game for this 3D. Uh, I may play out this half inning here at the third. Who's who's up? I'm, I'm really not even paying attention to the game. So shortstop's up for him. It's a 2-2 count. Grounder to third. Runner goes, and uh, pretty gutsy. Oh, there's two outs. So I'm telling you, I'm not paying attention to the game, but um, nothing, no score after two innings. Let me let me play around with this further. I mean, you can do whatever you want, obviously, because look at these different choices here. But I'm um, let's see if we do a center field camera. I mean, that's kind of like a stands camera, and pitch would be center field, and action would be center field. Let's see how the action looks from here. You probably probably wouldn't want to do this one too much because you've got the uh, the information up there in the way. But I bet if you go so for the pitch camera we probably want to change it to center field close. Let's see if that yeah kind of works. High fly ball to uh, left two away. Is Aaron Nola up? He is. Still wanting to play around with these uh, cameras. So let me let me see what the left field line camera looks like if you put everybody in the if you put them all at the left field line. And you could even if you wanted to remove the um, tags here so that you're not seeing the player information, you could probably do that and it might. Oh, that's pretty cool too. So, so you're able to see the pitch pretty well from from that thing, and it zooms in on the on the action. Uh, looks like Nola got a hit there. He beat it out for a single. Uh, who's up now? Sakura, but there's two away. It's two no count, and he balked. It's a little bit hard to see the action out here. That's why I didn't. You know, when I'm going to the games, I try to get close there to that down that first baseline if I can. All right, so swing away with a 2-1 count. Oh, that's a hard hit ball, but shortstop picks it up. If you've watched my videos from any of my playthrough videos from last year, I will have to say I don't I don't play out the games as much. Typically, I was only playing them out when I get to the playoffs. And um I, I expect that's going to be the same. I don't think I'll play out. It just just because you know, for me, I like to build a career. You know, I like to see how players come along and develop and things like that, and see what kind of history you can get with some of your players. So I don't usually play out too many games, but I do know that there are players who do this. Uh, gosh, I think they're actual out of art players who still play out every single game of the season and um, I admire their patience for being able to do that I just don't have that kind of time but I really uh, I, I really do like the, these cameras so much that I I may incorporate that a little bit more you can you can let me know in, in the comments if if I'm just being a little bit crazy about it but um, I may incorporate that into my playthroughs where if we have a big game maybe I'll I, I thought about doing that before uh, and some of my playthroughs where I would um, actually ooh, hit him. Where I actually would play out like we had a tough matchup. Say we got a good series against the Mets and we're competing for first place or something in the, in the division. I thought, well, maybe I'll play one of those games out. But I never got around to doing it. Just Again, just because of the time that it takes. Oh, bunt. Gets past the pitcher. He goes to second. And they double him up. Not a good bunt. Good play there. I'm, I don't like this camera angle as much, but I still I, I like the way it works. Um, uh, now here, here we got some some uh, fans getting involved in the game. He strikes him out. So now, just to give you uh, some more options here, let's go back to the defaults on all of this. And so we got the initial pitch and action and like I say you can mix and max you can have one camera 
the default one, the pitch camera from the first base side. It's, you know, all those combinations there you can do Bryce Harper up. So like I'm saying, action camera, let's say we go action camera, center field. So as soon as he hits the ball, it's going to switch to that. Or if he doesn't hit the ball and strikes out. One away, Jay Bruce up, three and one count. He walks. See, he goes to that uh, center field action camera there. Real Muto up, full count. Strikes him out, man. And then Gregorius, one and one. Oh, weak dribbler. The pitcher gets it, throws him out. Now Aaron Nola still pitching. Let me go to, uh, let's say the initial camera would be there. And view camera is going to be, pitch camera, let's say it's going to be center field close. And then action, we'll leave it at center field. Oh, good pitch. Gives you a different perspective on the pitch, too, being able to see it from that side. Let's ground ball to second. Easy out. Corey Dickerson, former Philly. He was there with them. Uh, eh, I think they got him before the trade down, deadline last year. He was a good player uh, for him. I was hoping they would kind of keep him. It's one and two count. High fly ball deep to center, and he dives and makes the catch. Good job. So we'll, we'll play out one more inning. We're in the fifth inning here. Let's see how we can uh, how, how we do. I'm gonna go back to that <clears throat> first base camera because it's just it's my uh, that's my favorite angle when I'm live. So let's uh, I'm just gonna say I'm a fan of this one. Like I'm a fan in the stands. And Kingery strikes out looking. Who we got up now? Quinn. Oh, the nice hit from him. Gets past the second baseman. And I think Nola got a hit his last time up, but I'm just going to try to bunt him over here. And uh, catcher got it through first, so good job, Quinn, taking second. Now, Segura, let's see if we can get a run up. It's 0-2. Uh, that's going to not fall. All right, so bottom of the fifth. We'll keep this angle. Uh, Aaron Nola, top of their lineup, looks like, with uh, Aguilar. Just notice here, too, it looks like uh, this is being cut off. I'm not sure if there's a setting I need to change to get that, get that away. Because it's, uh, it's kind of obscuring my lineup. Huh. Let me see if that changes with the pitch. Well, it goes away with the pitch. Crowner is short. And Gregorius throws him out. I guess maybe let me make sure if there's a... Uh, under the view options here. Well, it's somewhere. There's a setting somewhere for the players on the field. I'll I'll work with that later. All right, one away, three and one count. He walks him. So what we uh, Diaz? Uh, this is a rookie who I got to see in uh, minor league action. I think last year, he's a good player. He had a good season in uh, the minors last year. He's one of their bigger prospects, I think. I think the game I saw him in, he was uh, two for three or two for four, had a home run. He was great. He had a great game. All right, so two away. And that's going to be a pop-up. It's going to fall. It's going to fall on the left. Runners hold it second and first. So now we got <clears throat> Lopez up, and so they're leaving him in there. And he strikes out. So let's go ahead and go to the ninth inning. 
see what's going on. Still scoreless in the ninth inning. They got Brandon Kinsler in. Uh, we're going to have Real Muto, Gregorius, Kingery. See if we can get some runs on the board here. Weak grounder to third. Eh, nothing doing. Now we got Gr Gregorius up. And a weak pop up. Is that even going to. Nope. I thought that wasn't even going to get out of the infield, but right field, uh, Joyce catches it. Now Kingery, who's 0 for 3 today, 0 and 1 count. And just a uh, dribbler to the pitcher and uh, throws him out. See a lot of dribblers to the pitcher. I don't know how um, how many times you, you're going to see that in real life, but I notice in this game you'll see that quite a bit when you're playing them out. So we got Victor Arano in. He's pitched to one batter, and we, we are using the new rules. Um, where you either, which is another thing, you know, that's one of the things I, I get more excited about, even though uh, it's not that big of a deal, but I like the new versions when they have those rule changes. It's great that they're incorporated into the game. It's going to be interesting to see how that works out, where the relievers either have to face three batters or they have to end the inning. Um, in his case, I could take him out because he end, he ended the inning, but I'll leave him in there. And he walks the first batter he sees. <clears throat> so now we've got Dickerson up. Ooh. Dickerson's a lefty. How is he against Rowdy lefties? And and this is where that deliberation comes in. If I put in a lift, lefty reliever, he's going to have to stay in. Um, so might as well gamble with it and see if uh, – and hopefully it paid off. It's a pop up. Where did that go? Infield on the infield. So to Gregorius. Now we got um, Aguilar up. And Aguilar uh, was at Milwaukee. If you remember in 2018 when they had that exciting year for them, he was uh, had a great year for him. Who? He's a pool hitter. I'm sure it's stream pool, but I'm just going to play straight away. And it's full count. And he walks him. I think I'm going to have to bring in another pitcher here. Let's go uh, see what we got. So they're going to have Diaz. Is that right? Ethan Diaz? Yep. Who is about the same against lefties and righties based on my scout. So I'm just going to I'm going to put, let's go with Reggie McLean. I don't have the uh, bullpen warm-up going. I, I, I know that adds some realism, but uh, I typically don't use that setting in my games. And he gets a strikeout right away. And that's going to be a, a slow grounder. That's going to be tough. The pitcher gets it, throws him out. All right, so... I'll go ahead and send through the, the rest of this. I just really wanted to, to showcase the uh, different angles there first off. And we'll see if maybe we can squeak out a win here. Yep, I'm sure. And we do, man. Big big uh, 11th inning. Five runs in that 11th inning to win it 6-1. to one, Pretty close game. So it looks like Quinn was 2-5. for five. Uh, I know I was dogging on him starting the game, but... He had a good game. Gregorius, two for five, drove in two. Hoskins drove in a couple. Harper, 0 for five with three strikeouts. E. Player of the game, Aaron Nola. He did pitch a good one, seven and two-thirds, seven Ks, one walk, six hits. Good start for him for the season. But And I got an achievement batting around, so that's the kind of inning that we must have had. Uh, but... Just thought I would show you that uh, 3D gameplay first off. Next video, I'm going to go through and look at some of the options I have for playthroughs. I uh, might get some input from you if you have it. If you have it now, if you want to put that in the comments of this video, that's fine. I'm thinking m multiple things. Um, obviously, I'd love to do a Phillies one personally, and I may do that on the side. But for the channel, I I'm looking at some, some different options this year. Um, thought maybe the Cubs because, you know, they've got those big contracts and got some players there with big contracts who I'm starting to wonder about in terms of the quality play players they are. Um, 
they could be a good challenge, I think, not just for this season, but how do you how do you keep that team competitive with the uh, contracts and things that they have going on? Colorado uh, was a team that I was looking at earlier because they have a just based on this game, they have a pretty poor bullpen and or not bullpen, sorry, uh, they have a pretty poor minor league system in terms of prospects. They could be a challenge. I tell you, one of the best, I think one of the best teams to play right now, best young teams um, to start a good career long playthrough is the Chicago White Sox. And I've noticed another, I think a guy affiliated with Out of the Park uh, Developments who does a lot of video f- videos f- for them. Uh, he's doing a playthrough with the White Sox, so I'll probably not do that. But if you're if you're looking for a good challenge, I think they are a really good challenge. I um, I didn't broadcast it on my channel late, late last season, but the last playthrough I did with the Out of the Park 20 was the Chicago White Sox. And I was able to build them into a playoff team in, I think, like three years. And uh, they won like 97 games or something. It was, it was a quick turnaround, I, th- I thought. And it was basically just using the, the team and prospects. I picked up a few, you know, journeyman-type players here and there, but it was mainly just going with the, the team as it was with Jimenez and uh, can't think off the bat how, how many others. Uh, Robert is another one. But they, they've got a good young team going there in, in Chicago. But as far as this one goes, uh, thanks for watching as always. Appreciate it if, if you like it. Uh, give me a thumbs up on the video to help my channel. But stay tuned. We're going to have some more Out of the Park 21 videos coming up. I look forward to them, and I'll see you later.